What's up guys, I hope you all are doing okay. Welcome to another video of the Aegis 3 series unboxing, whatever you want to call it. This is gonna be this video is gonna be strictly on the performance of the Aegis 3. If you guys have been following me, the first video was about the unboxing, the appearance, the hardware inside the Aegis 3 trying to check out exactly what it actually had so this video is now going to be testing all those hardware working together testing how the airflow of the Aegis 3 as it was designed by MSI we're going to test how test that out and see how well this PC can handle different benchmarks and different you know stress tests in terms of like the temperature and stuff like that so we're going to be doing some te um, performances with Cinebench we're going to be using different games for benchmarking and then we're going to use AIDA64 yeah I'm right <laughs> we're going to be using that to stress test the PC and we're going to see what type of temperatures it stays on when the PC is on maximum load and yeah I don't know the police are looking for someone you guys can hear that but anyway guys we're going to move on I'm going to stop boring you with my speech and I'm just we're going to go on to the performance test the first test is going to be performed by Cinebench Cinebench is a real world cross platform test suite that evaluates your computer's performance capabilities it's also the perfect tool to compare CPU and graphics performance across various systems and platforms so Cinebench is also it's like a it's almost like a a must go area when you want to test like the performance of your CPU and your graphics. So we're going to be doing an OpenGL performance, a CPU with its normal with its normal code core, and then we're going to go on to the CPU single core. We're going to see how it can handle that as well. So let's start this and roll all select the tests, and we're going to see how this goes. So in the end, for the OpenGL result, you got 98.9 frames per second, which is good. Everybody wants that 60 FPS and above. So that's a good result so far. We've got a reference match of 99.6%. And then when you look at the scores, we're only just second, which is not that bad compared to like other people or similar people that have done this test as well. And then when we move on to the CPU, We've dropped down a bit to fifth. Um, the score 778 is an average score. <clears throat> you can definitely get better scores when you tweak things around. But the thing is, with the i7 777, with the i7 7700, you can't overclock it, so you can't really get that boost. But although it does have a maximum thermal boost, which is 4.2 gigahertz. Which is which is not that bad actually. So that's pretty pretty impressive. And also for the CPU single core, obviously we're gonna get a lot lower score than that. And we're just trailing back as third. We didn't do so bad, but obviously you'd be using the cord um, capability, cord core capabilities, not the single core. But it's just for a reference. So all in all, the i7 7700 is a good card, but. Obviously, if you're into overclocking and all that, you might want to get the 7700K or maybe you can go down to an i5 or stuff like that. But all you know, it's a good test from Cinebatch. It is average. You enjoy playing games on this PC, doing any other stuff you want right here. It's a, it's a decent PC. It's, well, I said decent, but it's a really, really good PC, I have to say. With the performance and the benchmarking results that I have seen, I am actually really impressed. I will be using 3D Mark Firestrike and 3D Mark Time Spy for the next performance as these are softwares or programs that will be used to actually you know put the CPU and the GPU on low to test exactly and the strengths and the weaknesses of this CPU or the GPU as well. But bear in mind guys, these are really really demanding software so they might they're gonna really really stress the GPU so it won't be like this when you're playing any games they're gonna, they're, they aren't gonna be as stressed as this but this just shows like an idea when it's 
fully fully unload you know stress like when it's stressed to the extreme and all that but as you can see for 3d mark it was running an average of 30 35 fps which is not that bad but trust me when you're playing games and you won't get that 60 fps you would get it but don't worry i will definitely you will definitely see what i'm saying when the next video comes out about gaming because i played a lot of games on this and i got 60 fps so i am not so worried about this so it got 13,300 score for fire strike and you're within the 83 percent of people who did this so like i said it's not a bad result you're above that 20 percent of people who have actually done this test with this same piece um, cpu and and a GPU so it, it's a good result I'll say it's not that bad and the temperature for the GPU was 70 degrees which is a safe zone it's not too high it's not too low so you'll be fine with that and the CPU was 40 degrees the CPU is bang on 40 which is good that is amazing the cooling is definitely working for that the GPU is okay 70 degrees won't kill your system you'll be fine running your PC on 70 degrees although lower is better but you will still be safe anyway so now this is going to be time spy time spy uses direct x12 and test the you know gpu and see if it's strong enough as well as the cpu you will do some physics tests and all that but you can see for time spy is a lot more demanding like i said so it's between that is averaging between that 30 it goes down below 30 as well it just depends on the scene and all that but trust me guys when you're playing you know normal game you will definitely get that 60 fps and i promise you that is what you do i know the test may be demanding it may be under 30 obviously you know if if that's the case if it bugs you you can always get a better graphics card you can i said but you can get like a more you know more like expensive graphics card graphics card to help you with that but the the result is fine to me you will still enjoy your games and all that on there and you can see the temperature was also 70 degrees for the gpu obviously it will be this because the gpu is on high stress test by this program so it will definitely go higher than that uh, the, but the cpu is still 40 bang on 40 which is good i'm actually impressed by this okay guys so the first benchmark we're gonna start is gonna be with Tomb Raider, well, Rise of the Tomb Raider, it's the new one that has just recently come out, I think, I can't remember exactly when, but um, I'm going to show you guys the settings I have put on, so for display, we've got Direct X12 on, that's going to help the GPU, especially the 1070, as it supports Direct X12 and all that, so we just got the normal, you know, normal stuff, there's no second card, so it's all good. And then when we go to graphics, we've got everything on very high. So we're, we're literally pushing this graphics card and the CPU to the limit. And we're going to see exactly what this PC can pull out in terms of like uh, FPS and all that. So we're going to start the benchmark and we're going to see what we can get. I remember playing this game actually. I actually enjoyed playing Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider is one of the games that you know you just pick up and you just play and stuff like that but this game is actually amazing. I enjoy it myself a lot but uh, yeah hopefully this game be I hope we can get like 60 FPS that will be amazing. In the end you get the mountain peak averaging at 60 FPS you get Syria averaging at 59.58 FPS and you get the valley at 60 FPS I have an overall score of 59.88 FPS which is actually good. You will enjoy playing Tomb Raider at 60 FPS with this PC. You're gonna enjoy your gameplay. It's amazing. I'm really happy with the score. The next benchmark we're gonna be doing is gonna be using the game Shadow of Mod Mordor. This game was amazing. I got addicted to this game. It's so so good. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I've done. So as you can see, um well uh yeah, we've got vsync on to reduce the tearing from you know so that it syncs the rate with my with my uh, monitor so that helps as well we've got no limit to the maximum X F fps so obviously if it goes higher than 60 that'll be fine Adva advanced options we do we just have everything to ultra or high or just the highest thing we can actually get the settings to so that's pretty much everything now and all we have to do is just hit the benchmark and see what we can get.
<laughs> so the maximum FA was 68, minimum was 52, the average was 60.03. So we've got 60 FPS, 60 frames per second right there. So after a long, long day of testing, stress testing the PC, doing benchmarks and all that stuff, I am actually impressed. I think one of the things that helps this Aegis 3 because of the way the because of the way the chassis is made, because the case itself is a very, very small form factor case, the silent storm cooling that MSI have come up with helps the PC a lot to regulate the temperatures which makes air go to the CPU and the GPU so like they separate them into different compartments so air, air flow is going for this GPU up there you got another air that flow that goes under which goes and call the CPU and then you get you have another one which goes beneath that which calls the PSU as a power supply so all in all it was a successful test I feel like this Aegis 3 will run most games if not all of them that comes out now especially with the help of the 1070 is gonna run most games at 60 frames per second at full quality as well but the thing is if you want to go a bit higher you can always go for the 1080 so you can get that maximum in the resolution and all that stuff but the 1070 that comes with this pc is still overpowered anyway the only problem i had with this was when i was playing some a, a particular game and i couldn't record it and stuff like that you'll see that in the next video anyway but um all you know this was a successful test the performance the benchmarks and all that i was actually happy with the result and yeah, this I will definitely recommend the Aegis 3. You know, I'll say it's a pass for me. The performance test, everything went well. So I'm gonna give this PC a pass. So make sure guys, make sure make sure you guys keep watching this series. I don't know, series of you know reviewing the Aegis 3. The next video is gonna be me just playing some selected few games. I'm gonna I've, I'll have the FPS counter on and we're gonna be seeing you know if it drops or if it dips or if it increases and stuff like that it's just gonna be like a normal just playing games and just to see how the PC can handle it in like ultra high settings and stuff like that so make sure you guys you know make sure you guys watch the video and if you haven't seen the previous one you can always go back to see that one as well that one was with the unboxing and all that but without any further ado i hope you guys have enjoyed this and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one